My journey comes to an end. What say you in your defense, foul creature? Where once I was your creation, now I shall be your destruction. May God have mercy on your soulless husk, for I shall have none. Whew. Whew. Man, it's really cold. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna lie down for a minute. Ugh. Oh man, the creature's gone. Well, how, how am I gonna segue into the review now? This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. So this year, I have resolved to read a bunch of classics that I just have not gotten to, mostly from disinterest, but sometimes just because I haven't really had the chance to read them. Because when I was a kid, I did read a bunch of, like, really old, well-known classic novels. Like, I did read Huckleberry Finn, I did read The Wizard of Oz, I did read The Three Musketeers, but there were a bunch I hadn't read until well, <laughs> until this year, hopefully. And first one is Frankenstein, the novel by Mary Shelley that came out in 1818. And according to some people, created the science fiction genre. I don't know if I agree with that, but, you know, it is a very, very well-known story because it has been adapted and parodied and reimagined and adapted again and reimagined again and parodied again just so, so many times over the past eh, about 100 years that you would think you know everything about it. At least, I certainly thought I knew pretty much everything about it, just via cultural osmosis, but not really, no. I touched on this a little while ago in a different video, but there are a lot of old books and old stories in general where people think they're familiar with them because, the, again, they've seen the different reimaginings so many times, but they've never actually read the original story that it's based on, or seen the original story that it's based on, and so they're really just playing a very long game of cultural telephone. You know, people who have, again, remade it, adapted it, remade it, changed a few things, like, that has caused them to have this warped idea of what these stories really are in their minds, and, I mean, I certainly had that about Frankenstein. Like, for instance, uh, and I mean, I knew this already, but a lot of people probably don't, that the creature does not have an actual name in the story. Like, a lot of people refer to the monster as Frankenstein, but no, Victor Frankenstein is the scientist who creates the monster. In the book, he's just referred to as the creature, or the fiend, or the monster sometimes. Or how about how the monster is actually very intelligent and articulate? Like, when he's first born, created, however you want to put that, he actually doesn't know how to speak any language at all, but just by watching humans, he learns to speak. And when he talks to Dr. Frankenstein and tells him the story of what he's been up to for the many months that they've been apart, the creature actually, you know, is very smart. He's very articulate. He has... Admittedly, his narration is pretty much the same as Dr. Frankenstein's, or it sounds pretty much the same as Dr. Frankenstein's, but it is still, you know, very impressive. Or how about how the entire book is framed as a letter being written by a guy named Walton to his sister. Like, I noticed a lot of older novels felt they needed to justify their framing device somehow, whereas nowadays you can just, whether it's third person, first person, whatever, you just kind of write it and the audience isn't supposed to think too hard about where this is coming from. And occasionally you'll see something where it's like, okay, this is somebody's journal or something like that. But that doesn't happen as often, whereas back in the day, it was very common. Like, Walton is writing a letter, he talks about his journey to the Arctic, where he finds Dr. Frankenstein, and then he says, yeah, this guy told me his story, it went like this, and then he writes all of Frankenstein's story, but then partway through, Frankenstein meets up with the creature, and then he, he goes, the creature told me his story, it went like this, and so we have a story within a story within a story, it's a little interesting. Uh, I'm not saying it's good or bad, but like, that, that's a thing people wouldn't know about. I maintain that Frankenstein is a good book. I'm not totally sure why it has persisted so long in the public consciousness, because, you know, it's just, it's good, but I'm not sure why, what about it inspires so, so many people. But I'm, I'm, I don't know, someone in the comments I'm sure will give me some sort of explanation. But it is, yes, it is a good book, and it has so many weird aspects to it that I wouldn't have known about before. Like, uh, again, going through this, the opening part I didn't know about. The 
uh, Dr. Frankenstein's story starts off with him telling the story of his father and how his parents met, and I, I'll admit I didn't care much about that, and I was like, okay, get to the actual stuff. Uh, but then, like, he creates the creature, and from there the story really gets going. But the thing is, the creation of the creature doesn't involve electricity. Like, it, that's from one of the movies from, like, 1930 or something uh, that they decided to put that in, and so pretty much every version since then has had that. You know, it is a good idea, it's cool, don't get me wrong, it's just not in the original story. It, this is kind of like natural selection in a way, you know, people have adapted it and put in their own thoughts so many times, and they've kept the good ones, like the creature being created with electricity, but then the less interesting aspects they've just kind of tossed aside and let them die out. And that is kind of interesting. Again, you can look at that uh, at, by looking at uh, other stories that have been adapted a hundred fucking goddamn times, like The Wizard of Oz, or Alice in Wonderland, or The Three Musketeers to a lesser extent, and that's another book where I think a lot of people haven't read it, and so they don't actually know what it's about, and so they feel like they would know a lot about it via cultural osmosis, but if you actually go and read the book, you'd probably be like, oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't know about this. The book was overall darker than I anticipated it being, you know? Like, the creature just straight up murders actual children at some points, and I mean, it's not dwelled on a whole bunch, you know, like, they, they don't describe in explicit detail uh, how he chops apart bodies or anything like that. But he is, you know, he, he does some pretty horrible stuff, and some pretty horrible stuff is also done to him. Uh, and, you know, I feel like the idea of Frankenstein that I had in my mind was that, yeah, the, the creature comes out and it does a lot of horrible stuff, and then Dr. Frankenstein and some others kill it, and they're like, wow, that was a bad idea, we shouldn't do that again. Uh, but no, that's, that's not it at all. Like, Dr. Frankenstein, at first, is, you know, horrified by his creation, and he runs away, and then the creation, like, goes off into the wilderness by himself for a very long time, and, you know, he tries to have a relationship with humans, and he tries to meet them. In fact, there's uh, a famous scene where he goes to a cottage and meets a blind man, and, you know, converses with him for a while, uh, but then people who can see come in and they see him and they're horrified and they chase him off. And it's from that point that he basically decides that he hates humanity. And, you know, there's a couple other instances of, you know, people doing horrible things to him just because they're shocked by his appearance. Uh, and, yeah, he is being wronged there. But then, again, like, he's so mad at Frankenstein for creating him and so mad at the world for rejecting him that he literally murders a child and then <laughs> literally goes off and murders several other people who have done nothing to him, but he's just trying to hurt Dr. Frankenstein and trying to get him to create him a bride. Like, that's a thing he asks him to do. And Frankenstein initially agrees, but then he goes off and d decide he changes his mind. You know, he decides not to create uh, the creature a bride, and then the creature uh, finally kills uh, Frankenstein's wife, and so Frankenstein chases him uh, for a very long time. They wind up in the Arctic and... Uh, Frankenstein does die not long after relaying his story to Walton, and then the creature appears and he's like, you know what, maybe I should not have acted the way I did. I am very miserable now, I'm gonna go off and die. And then he just goes off to die on the ice alone. I had heard that in this story, Dr. Frankenstein is meant to be the villain and the creature is actually supposed to be, you know, a victim. And while, yes, the creature is victimized in some ways, like he is treated horribly for no real reason, he also, again, murders several people who he really didn't, they didn't do anything to him. Like, he's not completely innocent in this, so, <clears throat> like, I, I was, again, I was expecting a little bit more moral ambiguity. Like, Dr. Frankenstein's actions are questionable, but the creature is much less of an innocent victim than I was anticipating he would be. That said, I did read this right after The Descent, which you can check my video out on that if you want to. It has nothing to do with the movie The Descent. It's a book. It's a completely separate thing. Uh, but that, that was a great horror novel, and Frankenstein is also a very good horror novel. Uh, not in the sense that a lot of you are thinking, where it's like, 
oh, you're constantly scared about what's going to happen next. Like, that's more terror. Horror is something where you look back with revulsion on what you have seen and what you know now. And, like, the idea of uh, Frankenstein creating life and, like, well, this is what happens if you try and create life, that sort of thing has been done a lot over the years. Like, I, I think that you can trace the cliché of a villain wanting to bring a loved one back from the dead and doing horrible things in order to achieve that. I think you can trace that back to this story, even though Dr. Frankenstein wasn't trying to raise, the de raise anyone specific from the dead. He was just trying to create life out of scientific curiosity and say, like, yes, I, I can do this, and he's like, trying to prove that he can do it. Uh, but that said, looking back on his experiments and looking back uh, on what happened, it is just gross and horrifying, and you're wondering, like, yeah, what's, what would the world be like if this sort of thing was really possible? So I can see how people would say, yeah, this is the first science fiction novel. I don't know if it's, like, the first, <laughs> really, but, yeah, it definitely fits into the, uh, the mold of science fiction, and it definitely fits into the mold of horror. I don't think I have a whole lot else to add. You know, Frankenstein is not a particularly long book, uh, and a lot of that is just taken up by very long descriptions of stuff, which is how a lot of classic novels are written. Uh, but it is good. I enjoyed it. If you have not read it yourself, I would suggest checking it out. You know, like, even if you know a lot of stuff about what happens, or you think you know a lot of stuff about what happens, I would recommend checking it out, because it is an enjoyable read, number one. And number two, it's important to look at the foundations of a lot of modern fiction, you know? Because, like I was saying, I thought I understood everything about Frankenstein via cultural osmosis, but because people have not read the original book, they've just been uh, adapting adaptations of it and thinking that they understood it, but really they didn't, and those people were also adapting adaptations, and so things have been changing with every iteration, and so you would think that you have an idea of what it, the original is, but you just don't, I would recommend checking that out. Just, just so you can have a foundational knowledge of where this sort of thing comes from. And also, like I said, I am going to try uh, throughout this year to read more classic novels that I've never read. Like, next up I'm thinking either 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea or A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court, because both of those sound good, but I've never read either of them. And, uh, again, I would recommend you not just check out Frankenstein, but check out, like, The Three Musketeers and The Wizard of Oz, even though I don't particularly like either of those books, just so that you could understand the original and where it comes from. And uh, that's about all. Thank you for watching. And this is my new sword. I actually really like it. Uh, see you later. Bye. Uh, uh, the pa patron names, they're, they're on screen right now. Uh, my $10 and up patrons are Apo Savalainen, Olivia Rayan, Brother Santotis, Buffy Valentine, Carolina Clay, Dan Antselievich, Dark King, Dio, Echo, Jalal Dalul, James M., Lexi Delorme, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Michael and Katie Hake, Micaphone, Mistboy, Mitzi Mona, Roby Reviews, Sad Mardigan, Psych XS, Sillier the Vixen, Stone Stairs, Toa Michael, Tesla Shark, Vevictus, Vimek Zol, and Wesley. All these people are great. You can also see all the other names of other patrons on here. So if you want your name on here, and you also want, like, early access to videos, um, consider going over there, donating. If you don't feel like doing that, you can also become a YouTube channel member, and uh, you'll also get early access to videos. Doesn't that sound cool? Does, doesn't that sound awesome? Aren't you? You're all cool. Goodbye.